are listening to Star Podcast. This is Dr. C. N. Chandrasekhar, Head of the Department for Anesthesia and Surgical Intensive Care Unit, Star Hospital, Nanakramgoda. And we are celebrating the World Anesthesia Day today. Uh, this marks the first public demonstration of anesthesia by Dr. William Thomas Green Morton. On this day, in the year 1846, it was done in the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. So since that time onwards, the Anesthesia Day is celebrated as World Anesthesia Day on October 16th. There are different types of anesthesia uh, which facilitates the surgeries on patients. And here we have got uh, general anesthesia, regional anesthesia and local anesthesia. Uh, for To give general anesthesia and regional anesthesia, you need an anesthesiologist to be performing the anesthesia. Whereas in local anesthesia, the surgeon can infiltrate the local anesthetic solution into the required area. But in all types of anesthesia, there should be an anesthesiologist, a qualified anesthesiologist should be staying at the head end of the patient and monitoring the patient all the times. In general anesthesia, the patient will be put to sleep completely and patient will not be aware of the surroundings. Whereas in regional anesthesia, which can be of different types, like uh, in regional nerve blocks or a combined spinal epidural, which can be done uh, with the neuraxial blocks. In all these cases, in regional anesthesia, patient will be conscious, but that part of the uh, body will be anesthetized and patient will not be aware of the, uh, the surgery or the pain during the surgery. And the anesthesiologist will be monitoring the patient throughout the surgery. Now, what type of anesthesia is required to a patient? As I have mentioned before that uh, there are uh, different types of anesthesia, general anesthesia, regional anesthesia. Depending on the part of the area where the surgery has to be performed, uh, we will be giving the anesthesia. So, um, the, and all the patients are fit for any kind of anesthesia depending on the their uh, um, comorbid conditions. So, depending on the comorbid condition, depending on the type of surgery and depending on the requirement of the surgery, we will decide about which kind of anesthesia is suitable for the patient. The anesthesiologist is a qualified doctor. After, after completing the uh, basic medical degree that is the MBBS, the anesthesiologist will be acquiring a specialist training in anesthesia. These anesthesiologists can be a diploma in anesthesia or a, a master's in anesthesia, which is MD degree. So these anesthesiologists will be uh, giving anesthesia and throughout the surgery, the anesthesiologist will be monitoring all the hemodynamics of the patient and patient's well-being will be always and throughout the surgery will be monitored by the anesthesiologist and all the hemodynamic changes will be taken care of by the anesthesiologist. So the presence of an anesthesiologist at the head end is always mandatory who is a qualified and who is able to manage any kind of critical situation that can happen during the surgery. So most of the time the common, common man will be thinking that the anesthesiologist will be giving anesthesia and leaving the place and the rest of the uh, procedure will be conducted by the surgery. But this is not true. The anesthesiologist is the one who will be staying with the patient from the time the patient enters into the theatre until, the uh, until the time the patient is received in the post-operative anesthesia care unit. So throughout the procedure, the anesthesiologist will be staying with the patient. And not only that, when the patient is sleeping and anesthesiologist is the one who is awake and monitoring all the vitals of the patient. Anesthesia is not an easy procedure. Depending on the comorbidity conditions of the patients, anesthesia sometimes may become a risky one. So it all depends upon how the senior anesthesiologist or a trained anesthesiologist is managing the patient and anesthesia uh, and not all the anesthesia is not an easy job to be done and because there are so many drugs will be given to put the patient to sleep and maintain the uh, surgical field surgical safety of the patient so during the surgery the anesthesiologist will be there and the means conception sometimes the people might be having that anesthesiologist will not be there and anesthesiologist the anesthesia will be performed by the surgeon only and the anesthesiologist might not be a doctor he might be a technician these are the misconceptions people might be having now anesthesia in the early years is given uh, the surgeries are performed with local anesthesia or sometimes without anesthesia so before 1846 the the kind of anesthesia which was given to the patient is 
either a local or no anesthesia but as an as the uh, intravenous anesthetic agents and inhalation agents are developed now the anesthesia becomes become very safe to the patients and they are very much stable and they keep the patient in a stable environment so that the patient can undergo the surgery without any difficulties now coming to the present achievement advancements in anesthesia now there are uh, gadgets uh, which can monitor the depth of anesthesia and uh, artificial intelligence also came into existence to calculate how much dose of anesthesia should be given how much is the drug should be given and which can be controlled by the target control infusions and the depth of anesthesia can be monitored by entropy or bis monitors so these these advancements in anesthesia are making more and safer anesthesia to the patients and which will definitely increase the safety of the uh, patients and uh, this will definitely help the uh, patient care during surgery and thank you very much thank you for listening to star podcast